How is mom just, dating over 60? <laughs> so I just started kind of living more in the moment and, you know, attracting people that seem like, you know, I, I did some online dating. I did, I did in-person dating. I did online dating. Um, and I could recognize when there was connection and when there wasn't. And if there wasn't, it was just kind of like, gosh, this has been a really great time. Thanks so much for your time. You know, have a nice life. <laughs> All right, everyone, claimed listeners and viewers, finally, I am recording this episode with these three amazing women. And it's it's been a long journey to get here, not only of rescheduling constantly for like a month and a half, getting all these different time zones in, but also dealing with a lot of tech issues in the process. But now we're finally here and I'm so excited to welcome Mo, Claudia and Marbella uh, where we're going to talk about dating over 45. And as I said, I'm excited about this episode because this is actually, the, and they're, they're having all the drinks and they're already <laughs> like, we're, we're in the groove and the mood. Um, and so I'm so excited because this is actually the first time that I'm that I'm interviewing um, three of you ladies who are over 45. And why I'm excited about this is because, you know, I think a lot of the women, I would say most of the women in the program are somewhere between 30 and 40, or maybe, you know, 29 to 40 something. And this group of women who are a little bit older is, um, is starting to also grow bigger and bigger. And the biggest kind of, I guess, objection or the question that we get from older women is, is claim going to work for me? I haven't seen older women, you know, sharing their success stories. And we absolutely say yes. And so that's why I'm excited for this interview, because you are uh, the representation of that amazing age group. Um, and I'm always, always, you know, so grateful that you ladies are joining this program and it is working for you. Um, and this is just, you know, a testament to the fact that the claim journey is not about how old you are, where are you, where you are in the world or what race, whatever, it, it's universal. It works for, for any woman pretty much who's willing to show up and do the work. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you talk and how this is going to work when we go around the circle, I'm going to be unmuting and muting you as we go. So first uh, question to all of you is please introduce yourself and know that you can share as much or as little as you want uh, to share here. And we'll have stories. So if you can come up with stories while you're describing something, that's great. So we're going to start with um, you introducing yourself and then telling us how did you find um, about my work? And we're going to start with Mo. Pressure. <laughs> um, you, you can handle it, Mo. Mo. Yeah. You're a tough Mo cookie. Or, yeah, yeah. Or Maureen O'Brien. Um, I'll just say right now, I'm 61 years old. I just turned 61, right? So Woo! I'm like... Uh, yeah, the prime example of dating over 50 <laughs> and um, well over 45. Um, those could be my children. Anyway, I, uh, I was married and divorced twice. And um, I had dated like, you know, a string of nice guys. And I mean, it, it, in 60 years, you can do a lot, right? And so, and I'd been around men pretty much all my life. I had been in like high tech careers where, uh, you know, I led teams of 40 you know, engineers and whatever else. So it's always sort of like, you know, the tough chick and, you know, to be in the data communications industry and networking and whatever else, it's like, you really had to kind of, you know, toe the line with like the other men that were in there. And that really, you know, got you pretty tough. So after two failed marriages and, you know, continuing to date other men that, you know, basically seemed kind of weak to me, or I usually ended up taking care of them or taking the lead, you know, I ended up, I ended up like dating a man who was, you know, I tried, okay, I got to try something different. And I dated someone who was just, reasonably horrific, you know, so like the alpha male, you know, the opposite where he's like an asshole. And I, I sort of like when that blew up and I got rid of him, it was sort of like, I remember thinking just kind of, go, you know, I got to figure out how men think, you know, I really got to figure out how men think. And I, you know, I looked at a link that was on a, um, an online dating service, this guy had said, ladies, if you want to know how men think, you know, watch this video. And it was John Wineland, you know, what men really want. And I watched this video kind of like, no kidding, shut the front door, right? So I, <laughs> I started kind of, you know, stalking John Wineland and watching his videos. And one of them was an interview with Anna Roba. And as he's uh, kind of going to some of the things that he would recommend for women, one of the things he said is like, hang around more women. 
And so I, you know, I looked on your site, I looked on a claim site and there was something on there that said, Hey, if you want, there's a seminar coming up, like tomorrow. I was like, oh, that's tomorrow. So I watched the seminar and it says, if you'd like, you know, to have a chat, you know, click this link. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> and then we talked and here I am. And here yeah. you are, Mo, here you are. Yeah. You jumped, you watched the webinar, my webinar, and you yep. jumped on the discovery call with me um, mm -hmm. to just talk about whether this is going to be a good fit or not. And then on the discovery call with me, this was back when I was doing discovery calls, you signed up and you said, yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that process of what happened on the discovery call and why you decided to say yes, because I remember very clearly that you also talked about, well, I don't know, I don't want to share what I'll, I'll let you share because our conversation yeah. is actually really interesting. So do you want yeah. to share that? And then why you said yes? I, you know, I did because I just felt like I'd been doing my best with, you know, trying to figure it out, you know, trying to figure out like how I could, I really wanted to find a partner that loved me for who I was and, you know, that I, I just seemed to keep making mistakes. I kept making bad choices and I felt like I was trying to make better choices and they weren't working. You know, they weren't coming to fruition. And I kept getting heartbroken or I kept getting not what I wanted or they didn't like me for me. Right. And um, yeah, that hurt. And, you, you know, you, you were asking some pointed questions. I didn't have all the answers on this, honestly, you know, mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, I got to find this <laughs> mm -hmm. and whatever, whatever you remember is great because I was probably in a fog by then. So. Well, I remember you told me that you live on an island in the middle of freaking nowhere and you could yeah, just yeah. believe that that's possible for you. And there's like no men around and I've dated oh, everyone. that too. <laughs> Which is so common. So many women talk. And I'm like, it doesn't have anything to do with that. And then you're like, yeah. I don't know, Anarova. I don't know. This sounds too yeah. good to be true, but I guess I'll do it. Yeah. And yeah. so you did it. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And we'll talk about where you are now because I know you have, I don't know if you, well, well obviously you're probably going to share that, you know, you are in a relationship um, and things have changed for you. It's nothing is perfect, but you are in a place now where, you didn't think you could be, but we'll get to that in a moment. Thanks, Mo. I'm going to mute you. And now let's talk to Claudia. Claudia, please introduce yourself, uh, yourself and um, tell us, um, how did you find my work? Mm, yeah, well, I'm Claudia and uh, I am, you know, uh, also definitely over 45. I'm 57. Funnily enough, I also have a tech background. So I was also in a very male dominated uh, industry. Uh, I now run my own business. So again, it requires a lot of doing and, uh, you know, effort, etc. And um, in fact, until I uh, came across your webinar and, you know, this was through the Elephant Journal. I'm an mm. avid reader of the Elephant Journal. I really love their articles. And, uh, uh, you know, I get the, the emails every day, uh, whatever they feature. And uh, there was an article featured where your webinar was, was, uh, was uh, promoted. And so I thought, yeah, I need this. And why did I think I need this? <laughs> because I found myself in a situationship, a word I actually learned from you because I hadn't heard that before. <laughs> You know, for me, it was, I don't know, maybe an affair, maybe a, a wishful relationship, whatever. Situationship, love it. Totally love it. And um, now if you were to ask me, so why did I actually join or why did I jump on this webinar as well? It was, to a degree, it was desperation because I realized I was repeating patterns. You know, whatever I had in my in my relationship. So I'm divorced. I uh, have uh, I have two children. And in fact, yeah, my daughter will turn 30 this year. So it's like, yeah, she. <laughs> so there, there are women in the program who are younger than my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I was I was married. I had two uh, long term relationships after that. And uh, I just suddenly saw some of the pack patterns very clearly despite the fact that these were very different men and uh, I was like what's happening why does you know what what can I do or is it the man you know because the first thought was I am picking the wrong man you know that was uh, the, the natural pathway and somehow somehow something inside of me triggered me to work on myself here and um, I mean I've always been a personal development junkie I would call myself so it what probably started in my mid-20s or so you know first issues and relationships what did I do I started learning reading da 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 
um, and eventually realized reading is not the thing, you know, because it's a concept. It's not really it's uh, it's knowledge here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it, it helps to a degree, but it doesn't really solve an awful lot. And so, yeah, in, in summary, it was like probably the desperation. <laughs> I thought, Got to do that, you know, and in the back of my head, I had this wishful thinking of saving this situationship or turning it into a, a relationship. And um, so I was willing to to do something for it. Uh, cut a long story short, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, and and it's good that it didn't happen, to be uh, perfectly honest. Um, yeah, there were definitely different epiphanies I went through. Mm, yeah. And Claudia, Claudia, um, what, and, and I know you're in Europe, right? Where are you in Europe? I'm in Germany. In Germany, right. So yeah. I'm curious, why did you say, so again, you had a discovery call as well, and I think this time it wasn't with me. Um, and why did you say yes? Because, you know, there's many, there's so many, I'm, I'm sure you've seen many different, you know, maybe even coaches or whatever, or programs, whatever. And then you got on this discovery call, right, with, with a member of my team. Mm -hmm. And you did say yes. So something in the discovery call really resonated with you where you said, yes, I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to take this step forward and, and, and do it. And I understand this was a state of desperation of like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. But what on the call, if you can remember, of course, um, made you say yes? You know, I don't, I don't really believe I, I, it was the call per se. Mm. I believe it was, uh, it was uh, the webinar spoke so much to me. You know, the, uh, I, that was the first time that I really realized that this, that I never really paid any attention to this polarity. And I had no idea how much I had shifted to this masculine side. And something inside of me told me, there's the key. This is something I, I got to learn uh, about, uh, whatever it costs, more or less. And uh, when I was in the discovery call, I mean, I enjoyed the, the dropping in. I thought, I, no, I didn't think. That's it. You know, as a matter of fact, it was a decision that completely came out of my gut, completely from my intuition. In fact, uh, when we had this conversation, eventually I stopped you're, you're a lovely lady who was talking to me. And I said, how much is it? <laughs> so straight to I, the I point. Kept, it's straight to the point. I, I yeah. kept it really shows that how much is it? And when she told me the price, I swallowed. I thought, okay. And I said, okay, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, really interesting. Because, you know, different women enter the journey different some some women like the discovery call really does it for them but I think for some women Claudia and that's what I'm asking because I'm curious it, you know you you watch the webinar and you're like this is it and so now it's just a matter of investment how can I make it work and, and I'm so glad you did so thanks Claudia we're going to get back to you now let's talk to the beautiful Marbella Marbella please introduce yourself and tell us um, um, about how did you find my work hello Yay. Hello. Hi. So I'm Marbella. I am 46 years old. And um, so I was married for about 25 years. And so I was very new to this whole dating world. And um, I remember when I first started, I, I jumped into this app um, by the name of Bumble. So I was like, okay, okay, let's see what this is all about. And I remember I... Um, had the mentality of if I'm going to do something, um, I got to just get it done, got to do it myself, <laughs> you know, um, so I, I'm, a, I'm a big giver, I, I'm just a very go-getter, and so I just found myself in a lot of situationships, which was also a term that I discovered um, after working with you. Um, but I just noted that I felt very just unfulfilled. That's the only word that I could find, just um, unfulfilled. I would just give, give, give. And um, I was just feeling empty. And I remember coming across um, your advertisement on Facebook. And I clicked on your little webinar and everything about it I was like oh shit this is me like this is this is me mm -hmm. so 
um, it just, it was my story. And so when I signed up and um, I just spoke to um, one of your ladies, it was just, it was special. And that's when I realized this was me. I wasn't ready at that point to make a decision. And, and they were not pushy at all. So I was like, wow, okay, this is nice. So I remember um, I went on my merry way, but then I continued with my same patterns and I realized, well, shit, I'm still doing the same thing. So no, I need help. So that's when I called her back up and I'm like, okay, I need help. And um, it didn't even matter. I'm like, just sign my ass up. Here's my credit card number, whatever. And um, never looked back. And I, I love it. Love, 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 love. Because I, I, through all of my dark bellies, I discovered the truth of who I am. And I love it. Love. So I'm so thankful for, for sharing, um, for you sharing your knowledge and helping me discover mm. Marbella. So, yay. Aww. Oh, what you're saying is just so, it's just music to my ears because this is, you know, for me, it's not even about the men. In fact, when I started this whole thing, it was about female success and women and, you know, feminine embodiment mm -hmm. coaching. I started doing this one-on-one -on -one just to help women get back to themselves. But then I was like, oh my gosh, the men's situation for successful, driven, ambitious women is real bad, real bad. And so I'm like, all right, yeah. I got to go there because women are just like, exhausted and and tired and desperate and so this is the solution yeah. and the solution to the men that they want is showing them the path to back to themselves to the truth of who they are to yeah you know as you said discover marbella and so really interesting marbella you have a different situation where you did sign up for a discovery call but you didn't make the decision then and then mm -hmm. you went back into the I'm not going to say the war zone, but into yeah. the dating field. And you're like, oh, shit, same patterns again. So I mm -hmm. guess mm -hmm. I got to go back and do it. And so yeah. let's continue here with you. I'm curious, Marbella, what like because you mentioned I, I love it. And thank you for showing me the path back to myself and rediscover Marbella. My next question to all of you ladies is let's talk perhaps about one or maximum two aha moments that were the biggest ones for you in the program. And as you talk about that, I'm, I really wanted, wanted to, uh, or you to, to share that through the perspective of, you know, 45 and over, because this is, well, it, it's different um, when you're dating 45 and over, especially, you know, if you've got been married before and children, it's a different reality. The journey is the same as in, in terms of the process, but it is a little bit different in terms of how dating manifests itself when you're 45 and over. So what were your biggest aha moments, Marbella? Well, my first biggest aha moment was when I first tapped into your lessons um, I didn't even know this terminology existed, but this whole polarity thing, um, when I, when I discovered it, um, the, the truth of the, the lie of the whole feminine thing, I was like, oh shit. Like I realized, wow, I was in my masculine energy. Like I didn't realize that's just who I was. Like I was always the one doing, getting, planning, like that's just who I was. Um, and it just spilled over into um, not only into my work, because that's what, you know, made me and makes me a successful person. But with my dating, I mean, that's how I related to I'm going to get that guy, you know. And yes, I would get that handsome um, guy. But then it led to nothing because, yeah, he was a hottie. And when he would say, well, do you want to have dinner? I'd be like, yeah, let's go here. And then when we would go there, um, when it was time to pay, my thought process, well, I'm an independent bad bitch. So I'm going to pay because I don't owe you shit. But then we would still become intimate. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, mm, so what are they going to give to me? Like, I was giving, 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 giving. And I didn't realize that I was never going to get because I was in my masculine energy. So that was my biggest aha moment. And so the whole learning to transition and lean back was, ah, 
amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that was the number one. Wow, yeah. beautiful. And I'm sure it wasn't easy, Marbella. Was that easy for you? Because you um, talk like it, it was oh, amazing. But, you know, <laughs> that's not so easy. It, for it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't because there was times where, um, like, there was one situation where it was Christmas. And I had been looking forward to this Christmas party that I was waiting. Um, I had been planning to go for, like, two months. And I finally got a date. So I was like, ooh, okay. So I was going to go. I had a dress. And boom, I got a date. And so I, I told him, I said, well, you know, this is not very feminine of me, but would you like to join me? And he said, sure. And then like the day before he um, changed plans on me and I was like, oh, hell no. So I, I, I felt myself, you know, in my masculine and I was getting upset. And, and he just said, well, if you want me to lead, you need to let me lead. And I realized like, ooh, I was like, ooh, this was where, that was my test. And, and I struggled with that. And long story short, I pushed him away because I couldn't let him lead. <laughs> yeah. But that was one of my lessons, you know, so it's not mm. easy, but that's how mm. I learned. <laughs> mm. And so Marbella, and I'm sure there's many more aha moments that, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the program is, I mean, there's like five modules and it's a whole journey of transformation and obviously we we're not able to talk about all of this now but I'm curious where are you now like because you mentioned you know before you joined the program you were in situationships in that pattern and you were unfulfilled and empty and so and you were married for 25 years obviously before so dating is like a totally new world and a new planet and so after you went through this process of through the claim journey and learned to lean back learned about polarity and did the work um how is your reality now what's what's different now All I can say is now Marbella is free. Marbella is complete. Marbella is whole. Marbella feels light. Like I, I come now and dating is, is fun. I remember you, you would tell us like dating needs to be fun. And I never understood it. And now, oh my goodness, dating is fun. Like I know what is waiting for me out there and and it's all about fun. Like I know who I am and um, like, that's it, man. This is me. This is me. This is who I am. This is how I come. And there's just, there's no words that I can really use to explain, but that's, that's what comes to mind. It's just light, fun, free, whole. Um, and, and I create my own happiness every single day. And that's that's amazing that's amazing to me to come to come to that um, space now where it's something that I never thought I would be able to achieve and to to be able to feel the way I do now it's I wish I wish everybody can can achieve that because it's so free so amazing so powerful Mm, beautiful let's finish up with a story Marbella so you gave us a story about this guy about the Christmas party where you led and 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 then when he said no you're like oh now you have to deal with all of that baggage of him saying no and whatever Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. now that you are in this new version of yourself who is free and light and has having a lot of fun how is your dating reality now with men what kind of men you're attracting and then how is that interaction with them So now I've, I've really learned to just lean back and um, I realize that there's, there's nothing, there's no mistakes that can be made. It's, it's just really just letting everything just fall the way it may. Like I, I'm attracting just men that um, they're just more masculine. I, I know what I want. So it's very easy now just to kind of um, just select right um because not everybody gets close to me it's just high caliber (laughs) high caliber and the ones that I do select it's fun and it's very easy to just my intuition it's just very easy and it's fun it's just fun it's just easy yeah it's just easy it's just easy and um I mean it doesn't work out it's we had a good time we had good drinks good conversation and thank you 
next. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, and everybody who's watching and listening, I want you to like, you know, looking at you, Marbella, this is, this is the, st- like, I have no doubt. And I think that it's very, it should be very clear why you were attracting those types of men. And, and because you're coming from this place of so much love and knowing who I am and freeing that lightness, you're bringing that energy to the table when you are going on a day. And I always say, what a gift, what a gift to be coming from that into the dating space than mm. to be coming from this is going to be yet another disappointment. And yet again, mm. I'm going to pay and wait for him to give back and da, 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 that story in the head. So yeah. it's just amazing to, to, to witness you in, in that. So thanks. Thanks for sharing that. I think this is really yeah. inspiring. Thank All the women are like, how do I get there? Um, yeah. And so how do you get there is you go to claim.com slash training. If you haven't watched the webinar or claim.com slash apply to apply for your discovery call. So you can have what Marbella has. So thanks Marbella. We're going to come, um, we're going to come back to you at the end to ask you one more question, but now let's move on to Mo, Maureen. So I'm just going to remind you, Mo, um, share with us one or two biggest aha moments that happened for you in the program. And then obviously, well, I'm going to ask you the next question after. So what were your biggest aha moments? I I think, some of the biggest aha moments were, you know, same as the rest of the gals here. It's like, I, I didn't even understand the whole concept of polarity. You know, um, you know, I was sort of raised by a single mother, you know, ran away from home at 17, you know, type of deal. So it's like, in my whole thing was like, I had to be tough, right. I had to be tough. I always had to like, you know, be better than the man or tougher than the man or whatever else. And, you know, I had no, I didn't under, I didn't know there was anything called polarity. You know, if I started dating anyone, that, you know, started getting closer, seemed like they were interested in me. You know, I had to prove like I didn't need them. You know, I know I could do it myself, right? Because that seemed to impress some guys, the needy ones. You know? <laughs> and, um, you know, my aha moment was just so like, oh my gosh, I don't have to like be such a tough chick. I don't have to be so hard and so tough. And I can be, I can bring out that softer side. I can be more vulnerable and they like me in skirts, you know? And, you know, so it's like, there were, that was sort of like this, it was almost like a heartbreaking experience where you're kind of going, Oh my gosh, I can just be me. And, um, you know, cause it is, it's like you spend 59, 60 years, you know, trying to just defend yourself and you're fucking exhausted, you know? And I just, I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't, it's like, I watched several people kind of going through really difficult times and, you know, in the, the long-term relationships that had partners where like one partner was really sick and the other one was taking care of them. What I saw was sort of like, there's a softness between them. And I'm sure that was the polarity and the, the long-term effects and whatever else, you know, specifically my brother. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful to kind of go, I want that, you know, I want that type of vulnerable example. And it's just like, and I don't, I don't have to always be the hard ass. I don't always have to be the person that says, no, I'll do it myself. Right. It can I be like, yeah, I like some help. And I, I would appreciate that. And ouch, that hurt, you know? So that was like a big aha moment for me that I could not always be superwoman leaping tall buildings in a single bound and, you know, that it would be okay. And, uh, you know, the other one was, uh, I would say- So hang on, before you talk about the other one. So Mo, when I look at your store, I think you're, well, first of all, you're such a a unique presence in our group. I always love when you share and talk because we're all laughing, like just the way you are. And I think you're- your trajectory towards the stand up, you know, poetry and stuff. Like it's going to be amazing because you have just <laughs> such a unique personality, but I'm, so your journey was quite amazing to witness because I think so many women, you know, I get so many questions like I'm a tough chick, you know, I love biking and like my tools and stuff. And, and do I have to change who I am? And I I've witnessed with you that you came into the program with almost this identity of, as you said, I'm such a like strong, independent woman has been always in tech. And I know you have like, I think, do you have your shed and your tools? Like, you know, it was almost like, right. To shop. It's a shop. (laughs) Right. And so it, it, it almost, and I think for so many women, and it was part of my identity, but I think there's something to it when you said, you know, by the time you like, it's been like 50 something years of, of that type of identity. Right. So 
I'm curious, how did you manage to actually, number one, realize that, act- no, 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 I am a feminine essence woman, <laughs> you yeah. know, because even that realization of, I think a lot of women, when they hear me talk about feminine essence or polarity, they're like, what is this bullshit? I don't want to be weak. I don't want to be this like damsel in distress, you know, like I'm a tough woman, like whatever. And all of these men are just weak, uh, you know, little bitches running around who just... <laughs> You know, and so it's really interesting how and I've been so privileged to witness you, you know, slowly, step by step, just let that Mo, who is a feminine essence woman, which most women are, just come out and like break the shell, I guess, and start to really connect to that side of you that is that that is that flow, that is that beauty. I know you started painting and stuff like that. So tell us a little bit about that journey for you, how did you de- like manage to detach yourself from that identity of a strong, independent superwoman? I'm going to tell you what to do. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I, th- I think a lot of it was just sort of like, I do like the feminine flows, right. And the group feminine flows are like, amazing, you know, and I had several epiphanies, you know, within those and, it, and it, that would be more like realizing that you could kind of go in there and, you know, just open. And I think one of the things that I found out was just that I stayed close. You know, if I could, if I could look inside my body then and look inside my body now, I didn't there. I had had experiences like with my second husband, where we had kind of gone in these situations where, you know, shit would hit the fan and it was just sort of like, all right, I'm going to do this. And, you know, you go into commando mode and you're like, right. And then, you know, you can just feel yourself closed. And I can now I can recognize that, you know, I learned how to recognize that sort of like, I was just going to go into like Attila the Hun mode. And what I really need to do is just kind of like stop and breathe and go inside and just open my heart, you know, and to open my heart and just realize that everything was going to be okay. You know, that the universe was going to provide. And it's just sort of like, I needed to connect to the earth. So I do a lot of like, my visualizations are like amazing, <laughs> you know, and, and I can connect to mother earth and she can connect to me and we have a happy little flower making place. And um, so that was a tool that I had quit trusting. I had quit trusting, you know, those instincts, you know, those gut reactions that you get, which is sort of like you telling yourself, there's something I would ignore those. I stuffed those down mm-hmm. and I it's just, I soldiered on and I, I learned how to quit doing that, you know? And I think that was one of the biggest things was like, it was like, ouch, that hurt. I need to feel that. I need to figure out why that happened, where it went and how can I stay open, get back to the world, right? You know, get back to like, instead of being in my little tight, little controlled environment, I needed to just kind of go be a little messier. And no matter how crappy my life got, it was like, the sun still came up the next morning. So it must be okay. So, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, those tools were nice. Those tools were mm-hmm. nice to help with those visualizations and the process of doing that. So that was yeah. super helpful for me. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so let's get into your second aha moment. So the first one was that just polarity, right? That feminine yeah. masculine energy, just like for Marbella. Um, yeah. What was the second one you wanted to mention? I think it was for me, it was just sort of like understanding the source of some of this stupid men that I picked, you know, just sort of like, you know, I mean, everybody has worth, right. And everybody has value. And it's not, I, I never got involved with like losers, but I got involved with people who weren't good for me. Right. And, and I, I think a big part of that was because, and this way I found out to one of the, the long flows, which is sort of like digging down and kind of like, well, what's that feeling, you know? And, and the feeling was just sort of like, you know, why is this happening? How come this is affecting me? And what's the, it's like, what's the hurt from? And, you know, it came down to like figuring out that I wasn't worth it, you know? And it's just sort of like that, that was the feeling that I had. It's like, I'm not worth it. And it was like, well, where did that come from? It's like, and it came from like something stupid when I was a teenager, you know, between my parents, you know, and the fights that they had, you know, for custody and whatever else, where it was just sort of like my dad had had to, he was paying $30 a month, you know, for child support, quit paying that. And for two years, and my mom bumped it up to a hundred bucks a month. And I remember when she told me that, which A, she should never have done. But when she did, it was just sort of like, I'm not worth a hundred bucks a month. And, you know, so, Mm -hmm. so you carry that into your adulthood and into your adulthood, it basically says, 
you know, yeah, you're not, so you got to like figure out how to make yourself worth it. And you have to be more and you have to be better and, you know, tougher. I don't know, but it was like, it's a lot of pressure, you know? And when you finally realize it's like, fuck yeah, I'm worth it. And I'm a good package and I'm a good deal. Right. And so, you know, then you just kind of say, ah, you know what, that was, that was their thing. This is mine. I'm going to go back to mother earth and grow some flowers. So, (laughs) you know, so that was the big one for me is just realizing that, no, I am. And that came from this. That doesn't, that's not true. You know, that's not true. This is that limiting belief that you had that said, you're not worth it is false. So you're worth it. Yeah. Wow. So beautiful. So where are you now, Mo? What, how, how do you feel and what's your reality with men and dating or, you know, yeah. your relationship? <clears throat> well, I am, um, I definitely like myself a lot more, you know, and I, I trust when those feelings come up and I trust them. I trust them a lot more. I listen. If I need to go uh, dig around, kind of like, Ooh, what's that all about? I have the tools now to dig around and to kind of research that and figure out, where that's coming from and where to go from here. And, um, you know, kind of going through the process and whatever else it's, you know, the type of man that I wanted to meet and um, what I wanted to attract, you know, I got, I attracted, it was really interesting. I was like super into like the magnetizing part. And I met, you know, this one guy, it was like, he literally, he was texting me later on that night, you know, he kind of goes, and I met him in an Apple store and he sits there and he kind of goes, because I don't know, there's just something about you. you know? <laughs> And he kind of goes, I could just, it's like the, your energy is amazing. Kind of go, yeah, it is. Right. So, and then uh, I was dating several people. I just started having fun. And I started doing the, the whole thing, just having fun. It's kind of like, it doesn't matter if I'm older. It's just sort of like, there's a lot of yeah, good so guys out there. How did you do that? Which over one? 40, 40, 40, sorry, over 61. Right. So yeah. when women here, I mean, you know, women in the thirties are like, how the hell do I date? Right. Yeah. But listening to a woman like you, who's over 16, like I'm having fun with dating. A lot of women are like, yeah. what? That's a total yeah. paradigm shift. So <laughs> how does that work, Bo? You tell us how is fun just, dating over 60? <laughs> you just have to like people, you know, you just have to like people. Right. And it's just like, if you just like, you know, if it's a nice person, whether they're your, your perfect physical specimen or they're, they're not, you know, you just have to say this person has some good in them. And, you know, you, you go to like, they're, hopefully they're going to arrange a place that's nice. Right. And, you know, you have like approval or denial and <laughs> where they want to go. And then, um, and then you just sort of it, in the moment, you just enjoy that moment. And so I just started kind of living more in the moment and, you know, attracting people that seem like, you know, I, I did some online dating. I did, I did in-person dating. I did online dating. Um, and I could recognize when there was connection and when there wasn't. And if there wasn't, it was just kind of like, gosh, this has been a really great time. Thanks so much for your time. You know, have a nice life. <laughs> and so I, I was never, I don't believe you should be unkind. You know, I believe be kind, be patient, be tolerant. Right. And um, so I think those are things that you have to kind of give everyone, you have to give everyone grace. And I think if you give everyone some grace and, and if you give men grace and you let them be the man and you let them kind of like, just treat you like a queen, then you know, then they, they're kind of like, oh, <laughs> you well, know, it sounds like it's a lovely. recipe for, 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 I yeah. mean, that's my recipe for women who are in their thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties. Like that's why yeah. for me, nothing's really different because you're still a woman. He's a man, yeah. you know, and there's plenty yeah. of men who are single over six, over 50, over 60, you know, men are divorced, you know, they're widowers and so on and so forth. And so it's this, everything's the same. It's just a different decade. It's, it's obviously different conversations, different priorities, but yeah. the process is the same and you can still enjoy dating even after yeah. 60. Um, and I met a guy who was like, you know, I followed your rules. Right. And I dated, I had a funnel or I had the, the dating funnel and, <laughs> You know, there was, there was one guy who was sort of in, in the lead and uh, luckily, you know, he, uh, he'd asked me one day for like, you know, a, like a one-on-one. So it's just sort of like, I, and, and it, I said, okay, because he was great and he's still a great guy. We've been dating eight and a half months and yeah, he's a, he's a wonderful man. So it works. <laughs> Beautiful. Amazing. Thanks so much more for sharing that. Mm-hmm. We're going to go to Claudia now. We're at the hard moments now. So um, what were your biggest aha moments, Claudia, in the program? Well, I, I can basically just underline everything that uh, Marbella and Mo said. It's uh, the, the polarity part was a huge aha moment for me. I had absolutely no idea 
that uh, what I was doing, you know, I was, uh, as I said before, I, I was like, what am I doing wrong? What is going wrong here? And just having the knowledge about, you know, what's happening here. And, um, you know, it's a uh, childhood plays a role, <laughs> you know, like most, you know, how you, how you're brought up. Uh, my parents are still married. <laughs> so uh, I was brought up by, well, by my mom, let's face it, because my, my, my father was not really present. And uh, her reaction to that was like, become independent, make sure you never need a man, um, emotionally, financially, whatever, you got to stand on your own two feet. And this was so hammered in, in, inside of me and, and my sister uh, that this was exactly the result. You know, I mean, I had a situation with the relationship that lasted for about 10 years uh, after my marriage. I was married for about uh, seven or eight years. And um, uh, this man was, in fact, a masculine man. You know, so it wasn't like I wasn't attracting um, my husband wasn't. Uh, the, the man that followed were, funnily enough, a masculine man. And uh, eventually this guy said to me, I don't think you really need me. And I was so proud to say, of course, I don't need you. You know, and uh, in hindsight, it's like, oh, my God, <laughs> what did I do? What did I say? And quite honestly, it was a lie, you know, and this was the this big aha moment for me to realize that I am this feminine woman. I'm not the one who actually wants to juggle all these things and to be that 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 woman is, you know, in the end, uh, you know, I, I raised my two kids the majority of the time I raised my kids I was on my own so and I had um, a career and so I did it all and I was proud of it and yes these were great achievements and I suffered and I suffered greatly during the time and I never admitted to myself that I actually needed a man I wanted to need a man so to say I wanted a man in my life who I could lean back and funnily enough you know, I got glimpses uh, of that through this second relationship because, you know, this was uh, probably um, the um, in, 10 years long because we never lived together. And in fact, he was even in a different country. I was in Switzerland at the time and mm. he was in the UK. So we saw each other um, on a fairly regular basis because he could travel and he was very free and flexible. And uh, every time he came to me to Switzerland, you know, everything was really, you know, organized and everything had to be in, in, in its place. And uh, and he was the super relaxed person, you know, let's go out. No, 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 I can't go out. You know, I got to do this. And, you know, I got my agenda. And so there was a lot of tension and friction. Every time I went to the UK, that was normally when the father looked after the children. So it was just us. And I said, you know what? And he planned. He did all the plans and he loved taking me out to nice places nice restaurants and you know travel through the country I know all of the UK by now because he showed me the country which is fabulous by the way and so funnily enough we had a completely different time you know because I said you know what do whatever you want I don't want to organize because I do all do it all the time in my life and I enjoyed it and part of me was like that's not right. You know, you're an independent woman. You can't have a man doing all that kind of stuff. Mm. So I was torn. And Klein showed me that it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to want that. It's okay to uh, want to, to, to lean back. And I never did that before. And a huge effect for me. Huge. Yeah. Wow. I think that so many women resonate with that, you know, being dependent, never rely on a man idea that's planted in, 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 in all of us. And for good reason, you know, because our mothers and grandmothers just did not have that op the, the opportunities that we have. And so all of that was with good intention. However, 
that intention for so many of us, and I include myself in the past, was just taken in. And it's not only mothers and grandmothers, like it's the whole culture today and the social media and everything. And so nobody really stops there to think about what does that do to a woman's belief system about men, right? Um, and so I love what you're saying because this is so common and my passion with Claimed and the program is to like dismantle that belief and to reframe that into, yes, you can be a strong, successful, independent woman and you can also be soft and gentle and you can lean back. And in fact, when you do that, as we've already seen from Marbella and Mo and Claudia is going to share with us is that, you know, dating does become fun and the dynamic of that polarity, the dance starts to be there and you actually realize, oh my God, men actually want to to help you and take care of you. And, and this is when they light up in there, as you said, you know, he was so happy to take you everywhere and give you that gift. And so, yeah, big, big aha moment. And so Claudia, where are you now? Uh, what What is your experience um, at the moment with dating and men? How things have changed and shifted? Hmm. Well, I'm practicing and I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mo said something which, uh, which resonated with me a lot. And this is like this opening the heart. And um, mm -hmm. I realize it's a process. It's uh, when I observe myself, when I watch myself in situations with men, when I date them, I s sometimes realize like, whoosh, you know, I'm, I'm closing up again. And so this is why I'm saying I'm, I'm practicing and hey, what we don't know, we can't change. And now I know it. And so now I can work on it and I can, I can uh, actively choose to, to open my heart to, to people. I'm, uh, that was another, was it an aha effect? It was a new concept for me to date a num you know, various men at the same time. <laughs> In fact... In fact, before, before I joined Clay, my daughter did that. And, uh, you know, we had discussions about it. And I said, do you really think this is the right thing to do? And said, why not? You know? mm. <laughs> and afterwards, after I, claimed, uh, I joined the program and I said, you know what? My lovely daughter, I just learned that this is actually totally right, as I told you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was there was actually a really funny daughter mom uh, situation uh, we, have, we have a very good relationship and we talk about that kind of stuff and um so yeah it's is it always fun um no i had some dips in between i had some 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 phases where I, where i thought ah oh, you know what this is an effort and then i stepped back from it you know, when I realized it's, it's an effort and I realized maybe I, I'm not ready or I'm not prepared right now. And I picked it up at a later stage. And um, one very important aspect of the whole dating for me or the whole what, what the pro program also taught me was to be kinder with men. You know, I was I was rather hard towards men I was very judgmental and didn't realize that I was and um, I'm, I'm far more forgiving you know having a better idea how men function now you know and 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 how I function quite honestly you know this was this, this was the biggest part is like oh my god this is a translation program you know it's it's almost like now things can fall into their place you know now I I don't immediately um, put whatever a man says into, oh, you know, he just wants this one thing. I just know he's flirting with me. And, you know, I, I could shift that, um, oh, he just wants me to, to you know, which is this booty call or whatever, you know, uh, to, yeah, you know what? I, I'm wanted and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm desired. So uh, kind of a, a shift in how I look at men. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. So I'm, you know, in summary, I am dating and um, currently actually there's potentially even a favorite coming out. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> nice. So um, anyways, I, <clears throat> I could talk about all of this and, and dig into your stories forever because it's my favorite subject. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have, you know, so much time. And so 
one last question. We're going to start with Claudia is for all the women listening, especially the women who are, you know, over 45 and, and, you know, there's the whole story that plays, um, the, I mean, even when you're 30, it doesn't matter what, I mean, I, I've met girls who are like 25 and think that, you know, it's all over and they're desperate and they're giving up on men, obviously. And so, but the, the over 45 is a different reality. And so for all the women watching and listening who, you know, who are in the, who are in those situations, perhaps where all, all three of you have been, right? Whether it's a pattern of situationships of men who need to be taken care of, you know, or you've been married a couple of times and really are scared of dating and don't understand and are desperate. And so when you talk to that woman, what would you tell her about why she should apply for a discovery call with us and, um, and, and join, join Claimed? And so, Claudia, we're going to start with you. Mm. First of all, I am so very sure that the majority of women, uh, regardless of age and yeah, even at our age, are not aware of this polarity topic, not in that depth. And secondly, talking about depth, I found this program to be deep, to really go to, to the foundation, because you know what? There is so much stuff out there in the market, you know, and a lot of it is so superficial, you know, write this text, do this, to have, you know, this is the technique, how to get the person you want, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? It's all that it might have, um, it might make some sense if there is the foundation, but if the foundation's not there, it simply doesn't work. And I found Claim to be a, a program that goes deep and to the root of, of, the, of the situation. And the most important part, it works. Mm, beautiful. Despite not having a relationship yet, I am so very much convinced because it's, um, yeah, it's, it's here. Not mm. just here. Well, it's not even about the relationship, right? That's why when we're in claimed, I never promise that, you know, there's so many programs out there that you're going to get married and all of these, like I'm engaged and whatever. And yeah, I mean, you know, a couple of you have been married already or all, all of you, I think have been married before. And so it's like, okay, and, and here's where we're at. So the relationship exactly. itself or the marriage is not actually the goal. The goal here is, and the promise of claimed is that you will start to attract different types of men, which... We can see that, you know, I, I've seen it hun hundreds of times now when a woman does the work and does the internal work, there's no way that she will not attract different types of men when she knows who she is, when she has her own boundaries, where that self-worth is there because men who treat you, you're just not going to be attracting those types of men. They're not going to be in your reality field anymore. And so the relationship is like a consequence of that, right? But then when you get into a relationship and marriage, it's the same principles need to be followed, right? Like I'm, I'm married for like almost five years now, but I constantly have to think about that polarity. And I still get into that mindset of telling him what to do and da, da, da. you know, and I'm like, no, no, lean back, lean back. Right. So this polarity is like a constant, not work necessarily or effort, but it becomes a lot more natural when you understand the principle. So Claudia, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think you've achieved great success and you should really, especially once you get past that age of like, I don't know, 30 or something where it's like, you know, you're in your mold and it's really hard to dismantle that if it's decades of, you know, uh, let's say old belief systems and stuff like that. So I'm extremely proud of where you are and how far you've come. And now it's all about practice. Once the foundation is there, it's all about practice, having fun. And then the top contender saying yes to the top contender when he asks you. So let's see. Thanks so much for sharing, Claudia. Marbella, um, why would you recommend uh, jumping on a discovery call with us and then joining the claim program? Um, well, if nothing more, I would highly recommend um, because I believe this program really helps um, a woman just really dig deep and just find the truth of who one is and really become embodied. That has been just one of the big, big, big parts of claimed. It has allowed me to really learn how to get out of my head and learn the, the magic of meditation, which is something that I never really even knew existed and how to do, but I just love that time that I dedicate to myself just to 
sit still and get out of my head and really not only say um, my limited beliefs, but really take them out of my head and really bring them into my body, into my heart. And, um, and, and it becomes part of, of me. And, and it's just really becomes part of when I speak, it is my truth now. So if nothing more, let that be one of the deciding factors where you are now um, becoming an embodied woman and, and speaking your truths. So, um, mm. be so beautiful. Thank you, Marbella. And now last yeah. but not least, Mo, what would you recommend? Uh, why would you recommend to women listening, um, jumping on a discovery call and joining the program? <clears throat> I, I don't think there's too many people who, too many women who would, you know, start researching or even looking up stuff like this, unless there was some amount of pain in their life, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they're going to, they're, they, they, st- whether they stumble across you or they are in search of something like that, they, um, they probably need it. <laughs> and so they probably need it from a certain perspective. And I look at some of the things that I've learned and I, you know, especially like for some of like the women's embodiment, uh, where I look at my own life, where I've had hysterectomy, I've had breast cancer, I've had, you know, all these things that have kind of gone on. And I look at some of the modules we've learned and it's just sort of like, wow, you know, if I wasn't like, I wonder how much of that is like my body fighting against me. You know, there's a big part of some of the things that have happened to me physically as a woman that make me wonder if I would have been more accepting, more open, more, um, just feminine as allowed, you know, that I didn't know I was even allowed to be, um, would those things have happened? Would they have not manifested themselves in the way that they did? You know, do I, the things that have happened in my life physically, are they from manifestations of the things that I put off emotionally? And I think what's so cool about it for me is that I've been able to just use the tools and to kind of like center and to open. And that alone is worth it. You know, I mean, meeting a man has been um, the bonus, <laughs> you know, and, and that's the reason you kind of go in thinking, I like I meet a great guy, right? But, you know, the bonus, the that's, you know, is is that the, the real core, I think for me has been just learning that self-acceptance, that self-love, that openness and that vulnerability that draws guys in like magic. So yes. that's that's what I say. Yeah, so beautiful. All right, ladies, we're going to finish off here. <clears throat> I don't even know, Claudia, it's like 1 a.m. where you are, which is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but I, I just want to thank you from, you know, from the bottom of my heart for being here with me, wherever you are for, for the first hour, figuring out the tech and all the reschedules and everything, because it's really hard for all of us to come together. But I'm so grateful and I'm really inspired by, <clears throat> by all of you, because it's one thing, I think, when you're 30, to join a program to work on yourself, but it's a completely different thing to go through a couple of marriages, have a couple of kids or go through what you went through, um, Mo or Marbella, and really have that courage really to to say yes and to jump in here to know that it's not too late to know that you know to have that hope and see that possibility that dating can be fun and this can be an experience even if you're over 60 things are possible for you and it's just so inspiring and and I would love for all of you to uh, be more present in our group um, because all of us women can learn from your experiences because you I mean all of you have more life experience even than I do right so I'm constantly learning from from all of you so thank you so much you're an inspiration and i'm sure that <clears throat> sorry all of the women well not all but a few of the women watching will be inspired to join and so for all of you watching listening go to claim.com apply apply for your discovery call you talk to one of my team members we'll see if this is a good fit and if it is then you're going to join us and then possibly you're going to see these three beautiful women on our inside our program thanks so much ladies you have a beautiful day night um and i will see you inside thank you yeah. all right thank ciao. you yeah, ciao, ciao. <laughs> bye